have we been doing for the last 10 minutes? We've been sitting here at smiley people time. Smiley time. We are white people. Oh Lord. What'd you say there was a, there was what time? There's a Easter time, Pacific time, mountain time, Christian people time, and then there's smiley people time. <laughs> Hey Griff, what are we doing right now? We, we made it approximately a mile and a half down the road before we got to turn around and go back because we didn't get enough smiley people time. <laughs> so we're going back to get more because smiley wanted to pull the I don't have my wallet trick before he leaves Jacksonville. What do you guys say about that big guy? He usually works for Roll in the restaurant. <laughs> but I forgot I'm going down to a tournament they need to see who I am. going in to investigate our room because they messed up our reservations. So we are now staying in a, a place where they've had contaminated and cleaned and they've had it shut down for a couple days because people smoke weed in it for two weeks. So we're getting a penthouse for a good price, but it might be a weed shack instead of a penthouse. All right, let's go. Uh, I don't smell any weed and I'm a little bit disappointed. This is Smiley's shoe collection for a two day trip. I'm not including the ones he's wearing right now. <laughs> no, we're ending right now. It's amazing. What are you doing right now? Am I doing? Yeah. Promotion of my feet. Oh, huh. alright. Must be a black guy thing. Yeah, definitely. So what? Tell me about your uh, tell me about your jujitsu lineage. Jujitsu lineage. I am a black belt. I got promoted to black belt from Edson Denise. Edson Denise is back in Brazil now, but at the time he was currently an American Top Team under Ricardo Boyo. Cool. So, um, it's your first competition in a long time. When was when was your last competition? Um, two thousand eight. How did yeah. that go? I won uh, first place. It's in uh, Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville Grand Prix. And you got some hardware out of that. Yes, yes. So what's what's it feel like um, transitioning? Uh, obviously, you you would have been what a purple back then. Yeah, it's purple back then. Um, the transitioning. Well, ask your question again. Yeah, I mean, you're transitioning from basically competing as a purple belt to competing as a black belt. What's the difference? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot tougher, but um, competition is competition. I don't really see that, that much of a difference. I mean, it's obviously, the guys are tougher, but I'm not really going to fight the guys. We're going to fight the guys' techniques. I'm trying to fight what they do. I'm trying not to let them do what they want. So a purple belt could have just as good as guard pass as a black belt. Black belt obviously be better to have more knowledge, more techniques to do, but that purple belt's guard pass may be the same as that black belt's guard pass. Back then I had to fight the purple belt guard pass. Today I gotta fight the black belt guard pass. It's just fighting their techniques. So you feel how are you feeling about this competition? You feel nervous or weird uh, or I'm anything? always nervous. I was nervous before, before any type of competition. But um I mean it doesn't it doesn't matter if I'm nervous, it doesn't matter if I was not nervous. I came to compete. Compete. And the last year, uh, in October of 2011, when I joined up Combat Athletics, uh, I was weighing in about 315, 311, somewhere around there. Uh, feeling good about myself. Got a good, got a good walk with God, so I feel good about myself in life. But something was missing. You know, there's some things I hadn't done. Some things I've been scared to do. I'd never tried, needed to do. And. Uh, so I joined combat athletics because I always wanted to learn how to fight. You know, I've done street fights and stuff like that, but I wasn't ever any good at them. Never really enjoyed them, hated them, but I always liked wrestling, but never really pursued it. Uh, so. so in October when I joined Combat Man, I just asked Smiley, I said, you know, I went to Smiley and like a couple months later after doing cardio kickboxing and said, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm losing a little bit of weight, but 
really want to learn how to fight. It's kind of a dream. And so he told me, you know, he'd teach me, and I told him I, you know, I want to do private lessons with him, and, and uh, he said that was the best way to learn jiu-jitsu, and after all my studies on jiu-jitsu, that seemed to be one of the best ways to learn jiu-jitsu. I guess we'll find that out today. But, uh, so fast forward, I trained with him for a couple months, and then I got hit by a car while I was on a motorcycle. It put me out of commission from training for about two months. And, uh, had a lot of trauma with that for the sense of, I never, you know, I was 30, 35 years old. I never really had any major damage done to my body, so here I was training, trying to get back in shape, and then I get hit by this car. At the same time, man, my business takes a hit. You know, we don't get a bunch of income coming in. And, um, just all the challenges started pouring in at one time. And uh, so we grouped, man, we grouped together. We kept on doing what we were, what I thought was the right thing to do, we just kept doing the next thing, which is we kept training. Once I could get back to training, I went back to training. And I'm surrounded by a pretty good core group of people, you know, and. Uh, I got a couple of really good friends that hang in there with me, you know, three or four really good friends that hung in there with me. And everybody encouraged me to get back to training, get back to preaching, get back to doing what I'm doing. And uh, so I got back to it and, you know, tried to do a tournament back in September, but there was nobody in my weight class to do it. I'm really doing this thing, man. It's really not about, I'm kind of afraid of things. Like I get afraid of things and I run away from them. People don't think that about me because they see the tattoos, they see the ball, they see this intimidating guy. Yeah, if you cross my family, I'm the typical male. If you cross my family, sure, I got a switch, I can switch. But if it's just for me personally, I tend to let things just kind of roll right over me. So this has been a year, last year to this year, where I've tried to, well, honestly, I really think it's been something God's put in my path that I'm supposed to uh, get through this idea of not, of quitting of stopping and saying, okay, well, it's, you know, if it's about my kids, I can do it. If it's about my wife, I can do it. If it's about you, I can do it. If it's about me, though, no, I'm not. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go focus on something else. So what's an acceptable outcome? For me? Yeah. The only acceptable outcome for me, whether I'm going to lose, is that I have fun. That's the only acceptable outcome. If I first, second, third, don't place it all, it doesn't matter. What matters to me more than anything is that I have fun. If I'm having fun, I'm playing jiu-jitsu. I'm not having fun I'm fighting. I ain't come to fight. Came to play jiu-jitsu. Of course, fight the techniques. Try to stop it from doing stuff, you know, but the spirit of competition, I gotta, I gotta have fun. There's other things I could be doing with my Saturday <laughs> that come with the jiu-jitsu tournament if I'm not having fun. I could be teaching class, I could be promoting my gym, I could be doing a lot of different things. So if I'm doing it, I'm doing it to have fun. Otherwise, there's no point doing it. I've been sitting here for about an hour and a half awake this morning, man, reading Bible, praying, thinking, still having the thought cross my mind, I'd love to jump in my truck and just run back to Jacksonville. And I want to get rid of that. I want to be able to face adversity in life, man, you know. And when I faced that car wreck last year, you know, I faced incidences where you know, my wife and I were almost separated. We got through all that stuff. And this is kind of, a, this is kind of the, to me, like the icing on the cake, the last step, if you will, of what I need to do in order to say, okay, I've completed all these things that I was scared to death to do. And I went ahead and competed and tried them anyway. So. Well, how do you feel about uh, Griff's progress? Where do you think he's uh, at in terms of this competition? Griff is ready for this competition. <clears throat> when, when I teach private lessons, like I teach, I don't teach what the student wants to know, I teach what they need to know. So Griff, right now, is so white belt. So I taught Griff white belt techniques to prepare him for a white belt level. Now, at this tournament, there may be some people who Sandbag has been a white belt for six years or whatever have you, or they've been doing jiu-jitsu for 10 years, but they just put a gi on, so now they're a white belt, something like that. Can't prepare anybody for that. But as far as white belt's concerned, Griff's is top, on top of his game. He understands the self-defense very well. He understands the basics very well. He understands technique very well. So the fact that I know that he understands those very well lets me know that he'll go out there and perform well. Again, not about the winning and losing. I, I, don't see, I don't see it that way. It's about having fun. Obviously technique is important. You want to go out there and display good technique and whatever have you but in other words I think he's prepared enough to go out there and have fun. And you only have fun in Jiu Jitsu and what you're doing. Think about your first day of class, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't very fun. You didn't know what to do. So I think he's set.
you feeling now that you're here? Good man, man. What do you think? What do you think seeing the actual competition going down? It's exciting. A lot of people doing jiu-jitsu. Thinking you can. Everybody walks out a winner. Everybody walks out a loser. Hey man, you feel any different? Nervous at all? Uh, always say. tournament jiu-jitsu because they put you down there they make you wait an hour and a half but none of that impacts the fact that you go in and perform at whatever level you're supposed to perform at 
you know, I went out there and got lost. And I think the biggest negative on that is, honestly, I was breathing good, felt good, even breathed good when I was getting choked. But I don't roll with enough people, you know. Smiley doesn't do sloppy north-south chokes. He stays tight, you know. I don't roll with enough people. That's, big, that's my biggest downfall in the day, I think. I should have went to a whole bunch more classes and roll with a whole bunch more people. So I know what people look like when they're trying to defend. I only really know one style, you know, so got caught. I'm all right, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy I did it. I probably won't do too many more tournaments because it's not really my thing. But I'm going for my blue belt now, so see you March 24th. Let's go. Eat up that half guard. Let's go. No bottom, Paulo. 
Circle that right hand. Let's go. There you go. Put it on his hip. Grab. Grab with your right. Grab with your right. Grab on his left thigh. Down near his butt with your right hand. Let's go. Stuff it up to half. Let's eat that half guard. Let's go. Hold on, Hold on, dude. 220 left, Smiley. Turn it up, man. Circle that right hand. Circle that right hand. There you go. There you go. Use the paw. Use your fingers. Grab. Smiley, two minutes. Two minutes left, Smiley. Eat up that half guard while you're task over there with the grip. There you go. Block that hip well. Eat up that half and let's pass now. Smash him down. Left hand cross face. Left hand cross face. Cross face with the left. Pass that mess. There you go. Stack him up. Stack him up. Stack him up, Smiley. There you go. Smash. 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 Seatbelt, Smiley. Seatbelt. Let's let him... move. Don't let him grab what he wants, Smiley. Put him on his back. Let's go. Start taking the back on the side you want. Start choosing now, Smiley. Let's go. Keep moving forward. You got a minute left. Yes. You want to stay up top? Start Let's passing right away. Right now. One right minute. now. Right now, Smiley. Let's go. Yes. Good job. Right hand. Circle that grip. Circle that right grip. Circle that right grip. There you go. Dictate now. Let's go. Push the pace. Less than a minute. Let's go. Less than a minute, Smiley. Let's go. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. He's going to try to sweep. He's not going to get it. Keep the pressure. Keep the pressure. Pass right away. There you go. There you go. Keep it up. Keep it up. Excellent, Smiley. Keep the smash. Keep that smash. Let's go. Let's go. Suck in the hips. Suck in his hips with your right arm. There you go. Yes, you're gonna get this. Keep climbing. You're gonna get this. Keep climbing. Get 30 right seconds. 30 seconds left, Smiley. Let's go. Yes. 30 Perfect. seconds. Kick that leg out. 20 seconds, man. Let's go. Kick that Keep leg it out. flat. Kick that leg out. Kick your right leg out. Stay on top. Pass now, Smiley. Let's go, buddy. Pass. Pass, pass, pass. Pass, Smiley. Pass. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, Smiley. 10 seconds. Three. Pass. Three. There you go, smash down, Smiley. Pass that. Pass now. Pass now, Smiley. Let's go. Good job, Smiley. Good job, Smiley. Stay that fit and order all that. Every Look time at, you sit down to eat. His <laughs> drinks 
a hot chocolate, <laughs> uh, orange juice, and a water. Chili. Thank you. Wow. Still drinking the I'm telling you what, what I think on the tournament. Yeah, tell me what your thoughts are. Uh, well, there was a lot of jiu-jitsu. Um, some of it was good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything profound to say. I think I need to work on uh, jiu-jitsu and mostly my stand-up game and uh, my guard. Passing guard, cardio, submissions, um, transitioning, scrambles. Yeah, but other than that, though, I'm ready to go. I mean, like, I can, I can compete like next week. You know, I thought I thought about. Well, I wasn't uh, I wasn't too impressed. I saw a lot of fat people. It makes my heart happy. Go fat people. And. Uh, all I have to say about that. All right, so tell me about things you can't control at a jiu-jitsu tournament. Well, the only way to control the referees here is to be is to be first, man, to be ahead, to be aggressive. I've noticed in all the matches where there's no points or there's, you know, advantage points and stuff, you wait on them. It's mostly guys that are, they're, uh, they're either high, real high level, so that they can't move because they're going to get taken advantage of, you know, quickly. Worried about those points, so they got to be real specific with their movements. And I think you can't control that. You got to just go for it. Man. You're gonna lose if you do. You're gonna lose if you do. But hey, lose, lose with a smile. Lose, lose hard, knowing you went out hard and fight. You know, get tapped. Who cares? Way too much. Way too much. Leaving it to the referee. Leaving it to the judges. But it does seem the judges have made some good calls, and I've seen that. I haven't seen anything that's totally crazy, totally out of blue, but. I think people, in order to really get away from like sandbaggers, you know, you're, you're not going to control that man. A white belt's going to be a blue belt. It should be a blue belt. He's been doing jiu-jitsu for two or three years, wrestling for four or five years, and he's got a white belt. Maybe it's his integrity. Maybe the coach is specific on character. You, you don't know what they're what they're doing. He might be a great grappler, but he's got a horrible attitude, and integrity. So maybe the coach, you know, you don't know what their coach is saying. So. You can't control that. You're gonna to have to just go out there and do your game. But understand that you know you'll know. I haven't seen any real sandbaggers here. I can tell, except for one blue belt kid. But, um, it was a younger, younger kid. They were saying he's been doing jiu-jitsu for like 10 years and still blue belt. He was real good. So, but yeah, I mean, it looks it looks to me like it's been a pretty legit tournament. You know, 